Hello everyone and welcome back to Cheesy Code. So today we are going to learn about custom configuration sections in web config. And this concept is not very new. It has been here for many years, but for those who don't know it, it will be really helpful for them. So the topic that we will be covering in this video is first we will discuss what's a custom config section, what exactly it is. I'll be showing you shortly. What can I do with it? How it is helpful for me? Then we will see how do I make one? How do I create a custom config section? And fourth one is validations, which we will be discussing later. But first see what exactly is custom config section. So what exactly is custom configuration section? So in our web.config, we keep all our configurations present. So what we can do, we can create a custom element of our choice that can be mapped to a .NET class in which we can keep all the settings required for a particular section of code that would be called as custom section. Suppose I have a payment module for which I have to keep all the connection related properties, all the payment related properties at a particular place so I can keep it in my config file. To keep it at one place, I need to have something that can confine all my properties into one particular area. That particular area is called config section. So if I show you my web.config file, I have created a normal application, default ASP.NET application. In this, you can see that there is a particular section called config sections. In this config sections, we can provide custom sections of our own choice that we can specify inside this web.config. Like we have this entity framework. This section is being added by the entity framework library. It's down below here. It contains the default setting that the entity framework needs. Also, I have created a connection config. This is a custom config section that I have created. I will show you how it is mapped to a class in my code. You can notice that this particular section takes a type name. This type can be from a library. Like in case of entity framework, it is coming from a library. Or you can give a class name of your choice. This class has to be present in your code. So in my web config, a section with the name of connection config should be present to make this all work. So here I have this connection config section. This is what I have created. So I can specify any XML structure that I want of my choice. Here I have created this particular parent element. It has two properties, connection timeout, connection retry. Then it has two child elements. One is dev, another one is fraud, and then it again has few properties. So what I'm doing is I have created a dummy class and a dummy config section to show you how you can utilize a custom config section in your code. Now mapped with this, I have created a class. Let me keep this side by side. So this is my config section and here it is the class that is mapped with this config section. So what we need to do, we need to specify a class with the same name as we have specified over here. And it has to be inherited from configuration section class that is from system.configuration. Also, you can see that there are two properties, connection timeout and connection retry. We can specify these properties into a class with a name. Like here, we have specified timeout and retry. This name need not to be similar with these properties. We can map these properties with a custom section using this string. This string has to be similar to the property that we have specified in web.config class. So here connection timeout is mapped with timeout property and connection retry is mapped with retry property. We can specify the default value to the property that we have created. So in case our web config doesn't have the value for this property, the code will take the default value. Then we have this flag is required. If we set it to true, then it is mandatory to provide a value to this particular property in our config. Otherwise, we can leave it blank or we can also skip mentioning it. Also, we have a validation. We can have integer validator, like we can give minimum value, maximum value, if the property is integer. If the property is string, we can have string validator. We have specify invalid characters. If you pass on any of these characters in your web config, the web config will throw runtime error. So these are the validation. If you can specify minimum length, max length, like you have this minimum value and max value in integer validator, for int properties, you can specify minimum length and maximum length for the string properties. Now comes the child elements, dev and prod. 
what we have done is we know that these two properties will be present so we have created another class that is being inherited from the configuration element so first one is configuration section and if you have a child element it would be inherited from configuration element so that the framework can understand that this is the config section parent and this one is the child element so I have specified a class name as environment and it has similar pattern of specifying the properties like we had this in connection timeout and connection retry what we have specified here is connection string and provider name like we have over here connection string and provider name we have specified this in similar fashion I am going to close it so the difference between these properties and these properties which are translated as child elements is this that it has a custom class associated with it like we have this environment class which is associated with dev and prod properties so that the framework can understand that this is my custom config section and these are the two properties that needs to be translated as child elements so this way you can have a custom config section and using the similar technique you can have nested XML structure like here we have config section then we have two properties then we have child properties because their class is inherited from configuration element which tells the framework that these are the child elements so now we will see how to retrieve the value that we have specified in this config section so this is my global ASX file so here I am reading the config section that I have created and I'll be getting an object of my connection config class so that I can retrieve the values of my config section through the properties like we have created timeout and retry properties so let's debug this and see how we get the values so here we are let's see what's the value that we have got so this is the value that we are getting from the web.config file like we have the value provided now I can utilize these values to initialize my component like for example I have created this method which takes this timeout retry and my connection string settings for setting up the DB environment you can also utilize the same so that's how you can utilize the value from the web config section and the benefit of using a custom config section is that there would be a single place in which you can change the setting and get things done like in the past we had a project in which there were multiple APIs that we were consuming so what we did we created a custom config section which was having all the details related to the APIs the path for every API their timeout and other API related information so it was really helpful if you wanted to change the connection string of an API there was a single place from which we can do the settings so you can think of various examples in your mind where you can utilize this thing in your application if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and if you are interested in C sharp related topics you can visit our site that is cheesycode.com also you can leave the feedback in the comment section hope you like this video thank you for watching